Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, a house church network, and I encourage you to visit our website, cwowi.org, and sign up for my weekly thoughts, which is a weekly teaching that comes out on Fridays on a variety of subjects uh, by emails. And uh, you can sign up for that, and that'll be in your inbox every Friday morning, U.S. time. It's there where we put information and in our e-newsletters about Zoom meetings, conferences, things of that nature. So sign up for that. We're a house church network. We're celebrating the gathering of the saints as they did in the early church, rotating homes, rotating who leads where possible. And uh, and then when you outgrow a home because everyone's used to leading and hosting, they just begin rotating among themselves and so on and so on. So anyway, uh, today talking about the measure of faith. And have you ever seen somebody and you looked at their life and you think, well, I could never do what they did or how in the world did they get by? And, and what we're describing is that, that what Paul said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, he said, I speak according to the grace given to me. And he says a few more things, and he says that, you know, that you shouldn't think more highly than, yourself, than you should, because God has given to everybody the measure of faith. So I speak through the grace given to me, and we each have a measure of faith. The grace and the faith are always inseparable. And... Paul is interesting. He says, I speak through the grace given to me. He couldn't speak according to the grace given to Peter or James or John, but just to what he had. And that's a good lesson for each of us today. Each of us can only live our lives according to the grace given to us. Uh, our son, Chris, who had the umbilical cord around his neck in a slipknot when he was born, is today, as I'm uh, teaching this, uh, 42 years of age, but mentally four or five he takes in a lot more than what uh, it gets processed in his brain. I'll find out, you know, a week later, he understood something that Barb and I were talking about. And it was like, oh, he picked up on that. He understood that. Uh, but as far as communication goes, he's on the Sesame Street, Barney, Veggie Tales, uh, Donut Man, Salty, the, the songbook uh, level, uh, Gospel Bill, etc. And and that's where he is, Clifford the Big Red Dog, you know. And so... Um, and, and so we care for him uh, Fridays and Saturdays when he we pick him up from the group home. And when I'm not traveling, he's at home with us on Fridays and Saturdays. And um, But for the first 24 years of his life, he was at home. And the hardest decision we ever made was placing him in a group home. It, it became hard when his little brothers grew up and went off to college. And then Barb, who's only 5'3", um, was left taking care of Chris, who's by that time is a grown man, you know, a, a teenager certainly, and, and grown full full size. But he couldn't uh, help him. He couldn't walk. He's in a wheelchair. Uh, talkative, the friendliest guy you'll ever meet. Everyone around Grove, Oklahoma, knows us when going to Lowe's or Walmart. You know, if I go in there by myself or Barb, they'll say, hey, where's your buddy? You know, and Chris is very uh, talkative. You know, he sees somebody in a cowboy hat, which is pretty common around here. We're in cattle country. He'll just say, he'll just launch out, hey, cowboy, how are you doing today? You know, something like that. Gets lots of chuckles wherever we go. And and that part is a delight. But um, but um, the grace given to us, uh, his first 24 years at home, but, you know, I'd go off in ministry and then Barb would be left. And because Chris couldn't get in onto the toilet, you know, he had to wear an adult diaper which he hated because he's a man at that point. He's a teenager and, a, and here's his mother taking care of him and wiping his rear and, and all of that. And it was hard on her. It was hard on him. And we realized that, that we either had to be full-time caregivers or we had to, um, and even that, how, how could we earn a living with that? And uh, either that or put a roof over our heads. So we made the hard decision to, to place him in a group home. And when we finally found one and we're thinking about, and we're told we had a couple of months at least uh, before an opening would happen. So we thought we'd have a time to talk to him about going to school, like his little brothers went off to school. So it was time for him to go to school now and, and gear him up for that. But within two weeks, the call came that they had an opening and it, it shook us. It took us by surprise. And Barb and I had talked many times. It's like, Father, you know, just just take Chris to heaven. We would rather go through even 50 years of life knowing that we have a son in heaven than, than to see Chris having to move out of the home that will care for him the best and give him over to other people two hours away from us who were responsible for caring for him. And it was just heartbreaking for us. And um, and this is what I'm getting to. The, that night uh, before we were, or as we were contemplating all this after the phone call, 
Barbara and I laid in bed late, you know, just talking and saying that exact thing, just praying, Father, take him. You know, if you're not going to heal him, take him. Um, it, it, and it was finally Barb drifted off to sleep and it was still, it was after 11 o'clock after 2300 hours. And I was still awake, lying on my back, just kind of thinking, just saying, Father, you know, put it on me, put his uh, brain damage, which is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy or CP is any brain damage that occurs during labor or delivery. Yeah, you know, put that on me. I know how to be healed. I know how to work healing in the body. Uh, you know, take him home, Father, to be with you so he can be freed from this damaged body. And I was praying that and suddenly standing there in our bedroom, I mean, just suddenly, boom, there's the Lord Jesus standing there. My eyes open to his room. My eyes are wide open. I see the natural realm, but he's standing there. And without any introduction like he normally does, if you know me, he's, you know, my, my story, you know, how I was called to be a seer when I was a, a teenager and how he started appearing to me from April of 1986 uh, through currently uh, a few times a year to, to fill me in on what he's doing in the body of Christ, sometimes what's happening in the natural, uh, in politics or the world or, or whatever. But suddenly he was there, and he, without any further ado, he just said, "Would you have Chris? Would you have me bring Chris home, causing him to miss out on the fullness of his reward, just because you feel bad for having to put him in a group home?" And I was shocked. I've got to be honest. I had not thought seriously. Had not hit home that Chris had reward in heaven. He's a handicapped child, totally dependent on on his parents. Talkative, yes, all talkative and everything else, but very difficult, you know, and it had never occurred. I, I said, okay, you know, I'm going off to ministry, and yes, I know Barb is one with me. We are jointly in ministry, though she is at home taking care of Chris, and Chris, yes, has part in that reward, and you know, it was a mental thing, something that we'd agreed to mentally in concept, but the Lord standing there in front of me saying, would you have me bring Chris home early? causing him to miss out on the fullness of his reward just because you feel bad for having to put him in a group home. And, and of course, I said, no, there was more conversation. I said, only, only this thing, I, that, you, that you guarantee that he will never be uh, abused or neglected sexually, especially abused or neglected. And he went, done, and disappeared like that. And my point today is to bring out the measure of our faith, the, the speaking through the grace given to us, and to realize that even a person like Chris, uh, and now in a group home these, what, about 18 years now probably, uh, but he has reward. Yes, he's he's the life of the party, so to speak, at that group home. Uh, always active, always talking, always making jokes, um, aid after aid, uh, who's we've gone through down through the years of the group home, talk about what how funny he is and how he makes them laugh. Um, there was a, one of his little friends uh, there who's now... Uh, not in that group home, but he would grab her hand and he'd say, he'd call her name and said, it's okay, Jesus is with us. It's okay, don't be afraid. And he would encourage. And we don't think that we have any big quote unquote reward as if that's something that we're striving for. And I know there are some churches that say, hey, we got, you got 10 people saved and they, they put like notches on their belt, belt, you know, that they've got extra jewels in their crown in heaven or something like that. But that's, that's fabrication of man. There's nothing like that in the New Testament. The fact is we live our lives. We, we, we are faithful. We, we are striving to do our best. We're trying to walk in the light that we have and, and we live and we die. And we're trying to walk with the Lord the best we can. And we don't do things because we think, oh no, there's more reward coming. But the fact that the Lord said, you know, stood there and said, you know, would you have Chris miss out on the fullness of his reward just because, you know, by me, taking him home early to heaven just because you feel bad for having to put him in a group home. I'm telling you folks, it's a big burden. And yet at the same time, I don't want Chris to miss out on the fullness of his reward. And no matter what we go through in life, that's the way I think. I think, you know, we all have the fullness of our days to fulfill. And it's not a matter of reward. It's a matter of, I have the grace to get through whatever I'm going through right now. When Paul said in Romans 12, 3, I speak through the grace given to me he, and, and that we have a measure of faith. That's talking about you and your situation and your life right now. You do have the grace. Second Peter 1, 3, and 4 says that, that everything that pertains to life and godliness have already been provided through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have everything that pertains to life, 
everything that pertains to godliness, godliness. You've got the grace. You've got the life. You've got the faith, the measure of faith to do what you're doing. Paul would later write in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 16, that he said, he said it's not wise to compare yourself with yourself or compare yourself with others. Uh, he said, you, you, he said, even he was talking about how he just ministers in the field that he's been given and the line of things that he's been given for his life. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to compare yourself to somebody else. Just stick to what the grace is for you in your life. And you can look at somebody else and you can say, wow, they've got a grace that I don't have. Or how do they do that? And you know that they're walking in their grace, in their measure of faith, in the grace that's been given to them. And that's really what it's all about. Just be faithful in the grace you've been given. Know that whatever you face today, you do have the grace to face what, it, what you need to deal with. You have been given the measure of faith. So don't look to somebody else and compare yourself, but look to what the Lord is doing there. Realize in the end, we'll all have the fullness of our rewards. But it's not something we're trying to strive for, like overtime pay. Hey, Lord, give me another jewel or something in the crown. No, no, no. We, we know that it's out there. We know the reward of heaven is out there. We know that we are citizens of heaven right now. And we know that's our eternal destiny. But we live according to the measure of faith, according to the grace given to each one of us. We speak, we teach, we live according to that grace. So rest in that grace. Don't look to others. Don't look to your own imperfections even, but look to the Lord Jesus to realize that gradually on a day-by-day -day basis, we're being conformed into the, into the image of the Lord. And it is a lifelong process. But we each have the measure of faith. We each have the grace to speak, to live, to work to interact with others according to the grace given to us. So walk in the grace you have and be at peace in that and be at rest and realize, yes, there is heaven coming, but for today, you've got exactly what you need for today. All right, God bless. Hope that's been a blessing.